Hello everybody, this is Dr. Tani Issa, professor of pathology. I make these videos for all medical students. Hope someone may find it helpful. Today we are going to talk about congenital anomalies of the lungs. So congenital anomalies or developmental defects of the lungs include agenesis or hypoplasia of both lungs or one lung or even a single lobe of a lung. It also includes the tracheal and bronchial anomalies uh, which include atresia, stenosis, and tracheoesophageal fistula. We have also vascular anomalies of the lungs and congenital lobar overinflation or emphysema, emphysema which may involve one lobe of a lung, and four gut cysts. And we have also congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation and pulmonary sequestration. So let's go to pulmonary hypoplasia. So what is pulmonary hypoplasia of the lung? Let's see, this means incomplete or defective development of both lungs. Maybe one lung may be affected more than the other, or the lesion may involve only one lung, but in majority of cases, both lungs are involved. This leads to decreased weight, volume, and SNI disproportionate to the body weight and gestational age. So pulmonary hypoplasia of the lung is the most common congenital lesion of the lung. It is found in 10% of neonatal autopsies and 90% of cases associated with other congenital anomalies such as hypoplasia of bronchi and pulmonary vessels or congenital diaphragmatic hernia. So in congenital diaphragmatic hernia, as you see, the abdominal, this is the diaphragm, and here's the abdominal contents enter into the thoracic cavity and compress the lungs and prevent its normal development. It may also be associated with renal cystic diseases, because it will also compress the lungs. Renal cystic diseases or renal agenesis. Agenesis means absence. Genesis means formation. Agenesis means absence, not formation. Here is uh, agenesis of the left lung. You can see the right lung, but uh, there is no left lung. This is renal agenesis. And it may also be associated with trisomy, trisomy 13, 18, or trisomy 21. So what's the pathogenesis of pulmonary hypoplasia? The pathogenesis is something which causes compression of the lung, like congenital diaphragmatic hernia, and it may also be caused by oligohydramnios. So the most important causes in the pathogenesis is congenital diaphragmatic hernia and oligohydramnios. So congenital diaphragmatic hernia, as you see, it, is, um, it occurs once in each 3,000 newborn, and it is associated with 30 to 60 percent mortality rate. In this case, you can see the abdominal contents enter the thoracic cavity. Here, this is the diaphragm, and this is the hernia, and the abdominal contents enter into the thoracic cavity and uh, causes compression of the lungs. So the hypoplasia of the lungs is due to decreased thoracic volume, and uh, which compresses the pulmonary capacity and often results in neonatal death. So why does oligohydramnios cause pulmonary hypoplasia? Oligohydramnios reduces the intrathoracic cavity size because it hinders growth in general and causes decreased rate of growth and causes uh, uh, reduction in the intrathoracic cavity size, thus disturbing fetal lung growth and leading to pulmonary hypoplasia. The exact mechanism by which oligohydramnios alters the respiratory system structure and the effect of oligohydramnios on the long-term respiratory outcomes remain unclear. 
So pulmonary hypoplasia is the final consequence in association with any urinary tract disease in utero that leads to oligohydramnios. Thank you.